Belmont Mansion is the largest house museum in the state of Tennessee, and since it was built a long time ago, a university has grown around it. And while the school stays on the future cutting edge of education, well, the mansion stays true to its 19th century roots. That's what Tammy Arnder discovered on a recent visit. This is Belmont Mansion, circa 1853 an elegant estate that is the architectural centerpiece of Belmont University. It's not only famous for its history during the Battle of Nashville in 1864, but for the survivability of its mistress, Adelicia Hayes Franklin Acklin Cheatham. Mark Brown is the executive director of Belmont Mansion. He says Adelicia was a woman before her time, becoming one of the wealthiest women in America during a period when women were very much in the background. She married first Isaac Franklin, uh, who died after seven years, leaving her an immense fortune of almost $1 million, including land holdings in Louisiana, Texas, and here in Nashville. And she married Joseph Acklin, not, but not before he signed a prenuptial agreement. The Bellamonte, as it was first called, was intended to be a summer retreat for Adelicia and Joseph Ackland. The Acklands built, furnished, and landscaped it as one of the most elaborate antebellum homes in the South. The estate contained an art gallery, conservatories, lavish gardens, an aviary, lake, and zoo. They moved in in the late summer of 53 and enlarged and remodeled the house again in 1859 and 60. The room in which we're presently standing in was remodeled and or was added and the architect was Adolphus Hyman, a Prussian-born architect who was working here in Nashville and brought this house up to 36 rooms, 10,900 square feet of living space and 8,500 square feet of service area. This is a 20th century reproduction of the original painting of the grounds. You can see the main house and what the 180 acres would have looked like before the university grew up around it. In this painting, you can see the bear house. You also can see the art gallery, which would have been at the location of the very first bowling alley that she had. And then back behind the water tower in this area of the property would have been the alligator pond. Architecturally, this house is in the Italian villa style. There are very few houses of that style left in the United States. Uh, there's probably only one more in the state of Tennessee. Uh, the workmanship and the craftsmanship found in the house is amazing as well, uh, as well as the sheer size of the house. When you walk through this stately mansion, you can get a sense that the belle of Belmont, Adelicia, had an eye for beauty and wanted to be surrounded by luxury. From the barrel vaulted ceilings to the captivating cornice work, most of this parlor has been restored to look exactly the way it did back in the 1860s. Only a few things have changed. The room looked somewhat different than it does today because of the, the finishes on the room. The floors were painted to look like black and white marble. The walls were marbleized as well to look like stone and then there would have been ceiling decorations on the ceiling as well. I, I noticed she liked a lot of uh, stained glass too. Yes, this glass in here, sometimes referred to as Venetian glass, is used throughout the house. This is used here in these Venetian windows uh, is sort of typical use of that glass that has no etch design in it, various colors, but then in the rest of the house, of course, the case glass or the etched Venetian glass is used. The clear paint on one side, then a ruby red paint is flashed to that, then the design is cut through using acid and a copper wheel. An extremely expensive glass for the period, but we think it was an attempt to make this house Venetian. Very good. Let's go take a look at that dining room. All, All right. right. Mark, this is breathtaking. Just when you first walk in, to see this table, and you say it seats how many? It seats 18. We have one account of a, a tea being given in this room, and there were 24 people uh, at the tea. So we think originally uh, the, the dining room tables in here would have seated 24, but we have 18 
today. What have you done to bring it to this, this level of beauty? <laughs> Uh, an incredible amount. This room had been divided into three dormitory rooms in 1890. Then later on, the back wall got taken out and one of the dormitory rooms got taken out. And we have a photograph of this room in the college period or as, a, as the YWCA room. It wasn't just the inside of the house that Adelicia accentuated with nice things. She wanted the grounds to be breathtaking as well. 200 yards south of the mansion stands the bell tower, which was used as a water tower, then as a signal tower during the Civil War. It now houses the Carillon, one of only five Carillons in the state of Tennessee. Following World War I, the tower was still surviving. It was turned into a Carillon tower which is a set of bells that are tuned and played somewhat like a piano. Uh, that carillon does not survive, but a new carillon with the same specifications as the original, plus some additional bells are still in the tower today. The Belmont Mansion Association operates and maintains the interior of the house. Their goal is to preserve not just the priceless antiques and the awe-inspiring architecture of the period, but to preserve history, or her story, as the case may be. The story of a woman who survived the death of six of her 10 children, two of her three husbands, a civil war, a major economic panic, incredible hardships, uh, but went ahead and persevered, and a person who really sort of set the stage for the women's movements that happened in the later uh, 19th century.